currently at Darlington Walls, very close to Stonehenge in Wiltshire. This week, a dig has been taking place to look for the so-called Superhenge that was believed to have existed here. What that is, is basically about 80 or 90 large megaliths in a huge semicircle around the entirety of Darrington Walls, which is a massive earthwork next to Woodhenge in the Stonehenge landscape. We're here, which are currently interviewing Simon Banton. We've got the Road to Ruins crew, and I've just kind of ducked out because I want to just give you uh, a take on it, which is just fascinates me. I've just got some aerial shots so we can see that they've discovered some post holes or holes the stones once went in. So this could suggest indeed they have found what's left of some stones here. Whether these stones were moved and taken to another place, more research is yet to be carried out, but I just wanted to kind of show you this. Uh, we've got some nice shots from the air, and it does suggest that there's something mega, megalithic here in the Stonehenge landscape that has never been seen before. The first piece of evidence you can see right now. Let's go and take a look. So they've dug out a whole layer of chalk here. It's chalklands. It's been packed with chalk as well. And uh, you can see all that here. I'll just zoom in so you can check it out. You can see all the chalk here. If you actually look over the top, you can see post holes. So just here at Durrington Walls with Simon Banton and the Road to Ruins crew. And we're just getting a quick update from um, Simon about what's been going on here because you've, you've been around here for the last few days on and off haven't you? That's right I have I've been doing some public outreach for interpreting the site for people who are coming and seeing what's going on and what we've got is under this south bank of Durrington Walls somewhere in the region of maybe 150 anomalous pits that have shown up in the geophysics and people have interpreted these as either buried stones or something else and the purpose of the excavation is to determine for certain what they actually are. Now after a few days digging we've now got down to these features on the original Neolithic land surface where people were walking four and a half thousand years ago and it turns out that these aren't buried stones. They are post holes with in one case a ramp leading into it that appear to have been dug perhaps as some idea of how to memorialise the settlement area here at Darrington that's contemporary with the big stones being put up at Stonehenge. It looks like they were trying to maybe put up a timber every five metres along to surround it and they changed their mind and decided instead of doing timbers, we'll forget that, having dug all these holes, we're going to dig a massive ditch instead and create a huge chalk bank. That's what we've got down to now. We've got down to a post hole with a ramp that leads to it that was capped by chalk that had fallen in from the bank material. That's what gave us, we think, the reflection in the geophysics that was being interpreted as a stone by some of the team. And we've got another pit that's next to it, about five metres away. It clearly shows evidence of having had a post in it. And we think that's a marker for people to dump the chalk to create the bank. So we've got some very exciting results out of this. It's completely unexpected from what we thought we might find. And the midden material around it is very exciting because it shows that this is a settlement activity at this point as well. We've got flint debitage, we've got pig bones, pig teeth, cow bones, a deer tine, all of the stuff, bits of broken pottery, that shows that there's a very compressed timeline between the abandonment of the settlement and its memorialization and we've even got the prospect of being able to tell to perhaps how long it was between the digging of the pits and the bank being created uh, it might be as little as one season and to get that sort of resolution in the timing of events in the neolithic is very rare indeed so this has been an extremely exciting dig and it's going to tell us a lot about not only the settlement of durrington but also how to um, interpret the results of the new generation of geophysical sensing techniques. That's extremely interesting. So we just got an update from Simon Banton about the dig here at Darlington. It's towards the end of the first week here. However, the post holes are not stones, unfortunately. We were, oh, I was really hoping they would be like the super henge with the super megaliths surrounding it, but not to be. But some other 
beautiful things have arisen. Let's see what happens over the next week. I'll be delighted to find out that there's more discoveries being made here in my home territory near Stonehenge. An oblique arrowhead, so it would have been hafted like like that. So that's the sort of piercing point and the sort of one one barb on the end. Of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's that's four and a half thousand years old. So we're just here at the Darlington Walls dig. This is like the last day. We've been here a couple of times right at the start and in the middle of the dig. We've got some aerial shots. Um, but today I've just spotted Julian Richards, had a quick chat with him. I want to see if I can get his take on what's been found here. He just showed me this beautiful little spearhead, uh, which is potentially, you know, 4,000, 5,000 years old. Uh, but there's been no great megaliths, no superhenge has been discovered here, unfortunately. But they found post holes, they found antler picks, they found evidence of a house, a wooden house, uh, you know, which is pretty much they would expect here at Darrington because it was the sort of residence of the Stonehenge builders. But yeah, it's quite interesting. It's just around the corner from me, so it's nice, uh, nice and easy to get here and check things out. Well, we, we haven't got stones here. I mean, that was the great sort of tease, you know, what are there going to be stones? What the geophysical signals have turned out to be is two enormous great post holes, and they're ramped post holes, so a big socket, and then a sloping ramp down which a post would have been stood. And they're, they're big, you know, sort of 60, 70 centimetres in diameter probably. The big question at the moment, which hasn't actually been resolved, is what's happened to those posts? Did they rot in situ? Or, as some people are suggesting, um, they were withdrawn, they were pulled out, and I can't see this because I cannot see how you can pull a post that size out vertically. Um, I think that they have to have rotted in situ, but um, we've got about four or five eminent archaeologists here and four or five different opinions. Uh, no doubt at the end of tomorrow, which is when it finishes, there will be some consensus, but basically we've got evidence for an enormous timber circle of several hundred major posts in a great sweep here which were then buried by the bank when the ditch was dug and the chalk was piled up that whole monument was buried so it's it's a new monument here effectively but it's timber not stone and is there any particular, you show me a small arrowhead, is there any particular finds of special interest yeah. here? Uh, the finds, there is, there are artefacts here of late Neolithic date. There's um, pottery, groovedware pottery, quite a lot of animal bone, some flint tools, one quite nice uh, oblique flint arrowhead. Um, just general occupation debris of the late Neolithic, but nothing like as intensive as there was down where the houses were found. Um, and the thought was at one stage that there was a house here and then there wasn't a house and then there was again. I think the general opinion at the moment is that we haven't actually got any houses here, just got some occupation debris. So I'm just just leaving the uh, the dig here at Darrington. You know, we're just on the edge of Darrington Walls here and tonight I'm going to bring up the quadcopter and I want to get some aerial shots. So I think the sun's going to be out and we're going to be able to see the exact shape of Darlington. And what Julian's just said is that although it's not megaliths in this superhenge, there are massive wooden post holes, which are similar to the ones, similar size in fact, to the ones we saw at what was the Stonehenge car park, the Mesolithic ones, 10,000 years old. So there could have been a mega woodhenge all the way around this huge semicircular um, earthwork. So that is interesting in itself. The meaning of that, we're not sure. It could have been astronomical, it could have been ceremonial, it could have had other purposes. And the fact that they've got slopes going down as well into where the post holes go is interesting. 
uh, because you know was that again a ceremonial thing they removed them in and out who knows but this is the dig at Darrington Walls here in August 2016 see the lights going on really So uh, here with Mike Parker Pearson, um, what can you tell me about the dig? We can see it's closing, uh, closing yeah, down now. Yeah, right, it's all over. Two weeks of digging, and uh, we targeted two of the radar anomalies, and found out that they were actually enormous post holes, really big ones, meter and a half deep, and um, held posts. One of them just half a meter across, the other 65 uh, uh, centimeters. So uh, what was really interesting was that they hadn't left them to rot like they did with the post of the southern circle. They'd actually pulled them out. And okay. uh, we, we could see that because um, we not only had the, the pipes that uh, they'd sat in, but they'd, they'd gone down, cut around the edges, even sliced through an antler pick that was embedded in the construction fill, uh, presumably to actually be able to kind of rot the thing to loosen it. I don't know how they did it, but out they came. I mean, they um, must have been beasts, like oh, really big. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you think they were tall? I guess you just don't no, know. We don't know, but given the depth of the holes, you know, we, we normally work on a, a ratio of one to three. So you'd be scaling up you know, three times one and a half. So it's getting on for five meters, which is really quite something. Um, but I think what's really interesting is that they actually removed them at the very moment they were constructing the bank and digging out this great ditch on the inside of the henge, five and a half metres deep, ten metres wide. So, uh, yeah, quite extraordinary. Um, maybe a change of plan. Someone said, this is nice, but it's not good enough. A any idea on the dating? Yeah, they're very well dated from our work down, down the bottom. Um, they're basically in the first half of the 25th century BC. So they were put up after the village here went out of use. Uh, um, and so we're looking at a date somewhere around 2460 BC okay. that this happened. Very interesting. Mm. And uh, any particular finds of note? No. <laughs> <laughs> no nothing, nothing major? Uh, nothing major. Uh, for me, the most ex interesting finds were um, were the, the chop through antler pick that uh, you know because uh, you know, chopping through an antler pick when it's relatively fresh is no easy matter they must have given it a hell of a bash but i think the other nice thing which really demonstrated that they had definitely pulled the posts out was that at the bottom of what we call the post pipe we actually found a, a cattle scapula shovel and that just proved that um, it had actually fallen into the void left by the removed post because if it had actually been in there otherwise it would have been crushed if the post had remained it would have been crushed by the weight of it a successful round do you think yeah very successful yeah and what other projects are in the pipeline in this area well um, nothing much for the moment so yeah i think we'll just wait and see but it's always a pleasure to come back to darrington walls so it's going to be like, you're not even going to know it's been there really, are well, you? This is it. In, this in, is a, it. in a couple the, of days. The best way to leave it is as if we were never there. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, depressing yeah. in a way. But <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. So in a thousand years time, yeah. they're going to dig it. I'll say, oh, someone dug someone's here. been here. <laughs> it was yes. that Pearson guy, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so what, was their, what were they interested in? Why did they want to do such a strange thing? <laughs> yeah. Are they happy living in their own century? Well, maybe, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe some of the places, places you're digging are archaeological digs from looking well, at yeah, who knows yeah. oh, the, 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 my colleague many my co some of my colleagues are interested in the archaeology of archaeologists <laughs> you know when we dug at Woodhenge we found uh, one of Maud Cunnington's trowels oh. that have been left behind there okay well cool thanks very much that's all right cool yeah. see you. nice yeah. to see you again enjoy your weekend <laughs> yes <laughs> right, take care <laughs> cheers